This section is about the coefficient of restitution and geometric progressions. So, you throw a bouncy ball, it hits the floor and keeps bouncing, executing smaller and smaller bounces each time as it loses energy. Which sort of ball will execute the most bounces in the shortest time? A bouncy one or a not so bouncy one? Before we answer this question, let's think in a bit more detail about what happens to the ball once we've thrown it. It behaves as a projectile that is moving only under the force of gravity, executing a parabolic arc until it hits the ground where it loses a proportion of its energy on this rebound. The way that this energy is lost is described by a number between 0 and 1 called the coefficient of restitution, or E. The speed after the collision vertically is E times the vertical speed before the collision. After this collision, the ball again behaves as a projectile, executing a smaller parabolic arc. As only a proportion of the energy is lost on each rebound, the ball will execute an infinite number of bounces. However, it will execute them all in a finite period of time, and we shall see that this time is given by 2 times the vertical velocity divided by g, all divided by 1 minus e. This is another somewhat counterintuitive result. How can we have an infinite number of bounces taking a finite length of time? An analogy which illustrates this is cutting in half a piece of paper over and over again. Cut a piece of paper in half. Put half to one side. This half represents the time taken for one bounce. Now take what's left and halve it again and set one of these new halves aside again. This represents the time taken for the second bounce. Repeat forever. The funny thing is you can repeat forever. There's always a remaining bit of paper which you can further divide, and therefore an infinite number of bounces. However, the total amount of time taken for the bounces is finite. It's represented by the size of the original paper before you started cutting it up. Infinite pieces of paper from a sheet with finite area. Infinite bounces of ball in finite time. Now let's have a reality check. Let's consider a similar but different problem. A piece of regular A4 paper is about 100 microns thick. That's about 10 to the minus 4 meters. How many times would you have to fold it in half for its thickness to stretch to the moon? The moon is 384,000 kilometers away. It turns out that you only have to fold it over 42 times to get all the way to the moon. Not very many folds at all. So what happens to our paper once it's been folded over 42 times? What's its area? Well, each fold halves the area, and the original area of 290 times 210 millimetres becomes, after 42 folds, 100 by 140 nanometres. This is smaller than the wavelength of visible light. So even if we could fold the paper in half 42 times, we wouldn't be able to see it stretching to the moon anyway. This is our reality check. Sure, mathematically it's possible to fold a piece of paper in half forever or make a ball bounce an infinite number of times, but in reality other factors come into play. For example, soon your paper becomes so thick that you can't fold it anymore and your ball is performing bounces that are smaller than the diameter of an atom. So is it really bouncing? And if it is, can you tell anyway? So what's the answer? Which sort of ball will execute the most bounces in the shortest time? Well, mathematically, according to our equation, a not very bouncy ball will damp down the motion and get you infinite bounces in a very quick time. But in reality, this ball will probably just stop after a few bounces, and you'd be better off going against the maths and picking something much more bouncy. In theory, it is possible for a ball to bounce an infinite number of times in a finite period of time. 